Hello and welcome to the presentation. In this video we will go through the honeymoon period. We will go through the background information. What is it? How long does it last? Is it a cure? And can it be extended? Let's begin. Alright, so what is the honeymoon period? Before we get into this, let's first look at some background information. I highly recommend going through the presentation on insulin resistance and beta cell dysfunction. The link will be in the description below. Now moving forward, in the initial phases of the disease, the beta cells are dying, they're being destroyed by the body's immune system. And this leads to less and less insulin being released. And furthermore, we need to understand that high blood glucose levels, or also termed glucotoxicity, this also can lead to damage of the beta cells, and this will lead to beta cell dysfunction. Now, when a person is first diagnosed with diabetes, type 1 diabetes, they will be started on exogenous insulin. Remember, exogenous just refers to uh, the insulin that's being injected, for example. So you have basal insulin, you have bolus insulin. And this is to help control the high blood glucose levels. And when we are given exogenous insulin, it is thought that by controlling the high glucose levels or the glucotoxicity, this is giving time for the beta cells to rest or recover you can think of it as a, the, it's a temporary recovery for the beta cells. And remember, glucotoxicity plays a role in beta cell damage and dysfunction. So by treating with the exogenous insulin, this gives the remaining beta cells a break to recover. And the functioning beta cells that are present at this time um, are able to release sufficient amounts of insulin to control the glycemia. This helps to maintain normal or near normal blood glucose levels and due to the remaining beta cells are able to release insulin as well as help control the blood glucose levels, the exogenous insulin requirements may need readjustments and less insulin needed. To sum up the honeymoon period, we can basically say that it just refers to the initial period following the diagnosis when the beta cells are still able to produce sufficient amounts of insulin to control blood glucose levels and also reduce the amount of exogenous insulin requirements. All right, so let's go through some key points of the honeymoon period. It's common in type 1 diabetes, and as we had it earlier, it occurs shortly after diagnosis, but not everyone has a honeymoon period. Approximately 60% of people with type 1 diabetes will go through the honeymoon phase shortly after the diagnosis. An interesting point is that at the time of diagnosis, a patient may have 15 to 40% of normal beta cell function remaining. And furthermore, there may be 90% 90, 90 of beta cells may be lost at the time of clinical presentation of type 1 diabetes. So it's amazing to see that the pancreas still has the capacity to release insulin to maintain our blood glucose levels even though there may be a lack of the beta cells present. All right, so how long does the honeymoon period last? It can vary. It can be weeks, months, or even years. The blood glucose levels are only going to be maintained normal or near normal up to a certain point because over time, as the beta cells slowly die or destroyed by the body's immune system or from glucose toxicity, this is going to lead, lead to less and less insulin being released from the pancreas. So this moves us on to another question, when does the symptoms arise? Again, this will vary with each individual and the degree of beta cell dysfunction and beta cell loss. Usually the symptoms of type 1 diabetes will begin when majority of the beta cells have been destroyed. Basically, when there is insufficient insulin being released to control the blood glucose levels, this will give rise to the hyperglycemia symptoms. So just to summarize this part, so when there's beta cell dysfunction or destruction, there's insufficient amounts of insulin being released. When there's insufficient insulin, this will lead to increase in blood glucose levels, leading to hyperglycemia and hyperglycemia symptoms. And if this is not dealt with properly, this can lead to complications such as DKA or diabetic ketoacidosis. As we highlighted earlier, the blood glucose levels will only be controlled up to a certain point in the honeymoon period. Eventually, there's not going to be a sufficient amount 
of endogenous insulin secreted by the pancreatic beta cells to compensate for any blood glucose levels or help control any hyperglycemia. And in this situation, the next step is to consider injectable insulin or termed exogenous insulin. And the units would be adjusted as needed until the blood glucose levels are under control and within range. And this will generally involve using a basal bolus insulin. And the basal being the uh, long acting or intermediate acting and bolus being the uh, regular insulin or rapid acting insulin or sometimes term, termed the uh, mealtime insulin. So is the honeymoon period a cure for type 1 diabetes? The answer is that this is only temporary and not a cure. Eventually over time as the disease progresses and less beta cells are present and less insulin being released by those remaining beta cells may not be sufficient to control any hyperglycemia which will lead to symptoms and eventually injectable insulin will be needed. So the honeymoon period does not repeat itself again later in life. There has been some research that shows that diet and exercise and along with proper management of blood glucose levels may help extend the honeymoon period. There has been research that has shown that those with type 1 diabetes undertaking high levels of physical exercise, this can help extend the honeymoon period compared to those with a more sedentary lifestyle. And by doing this, it's proposed that exercise, exercise helps to prolong the honeymoon period through increasing both the insulin sensitivity as well as the beta cell function. So here's a summary slide or a hypothetical example of what the honeymoon period may look like. So here we have a normal person, they're non-diabetic, but there's an underlying disease progression occurring. So let's say that there is beta cell dysfunction, lack of beta cells present, less insulin being released, which will lead to hyperglycemia, and the pancreas is working overload. Eventually, because the hyperglycemia is not being treated, this leads to diabetic ketoacidosis or DKA. So the person is admitted to hospital and the diagnosis is made that they are type 1 diabetes and they are treated for that and they are started on injectable insulin. Now by starting the injectable insulin this gives the pancreas or the beta cells a break. It gives them time to recover. So basically around this time would be the honeymoon period and remember that with the honeymoon period the functioning beta cells at this time are able to keep up with the insulin demands to control any glycemia. Because that the in injectable insulin has given the pancreas time to recover, the requirements for the injectable insulin will be less compared to when they are first diagnosed. Now, progressing weeks, months, or even years later, eventually there will not be sufficient amounts of insulin being released by the beta cells or maybe lack of beta cells present. And this is when this will lead to the full-blown type 1 diabetes and injectable insulin will be required. So using the basal and bolus insulin. All right, that concludes the presentation on the honeymoon period. I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. And again, thanks for watching.